Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Yesha, if you're new here. And today I thought I would address this question that I got on a most recent video, which is what are really the differences between interventional radiology and diagnostic radiology in terms of salary and you know lifestyle and just like day-to-day -day life. So I thought, you know, I don't think I've made a video about really the differences between IR and DR, so I thought I would do that today. So if this is interesting to you, please keep watching. So it is a little bit confusing because they are both like radiology, right? But what are the differences between IR and DR? Well, I would say the main, you know, the main difference is the day-to-day -day work. The day-to-day -day work that you're doing in interventional radiology is totally different than the main work, day-to-day -day work that you're doing in diagnostic radiology. Interventional radiologists usually come in earlier than diagnostic radiologists. They round on their patients pretty routinely and their entire day is doing procedures. So you are consenting your patients, you are doing the procedure, you are doing your post-procedure notes, you have to do lots of procedure notes during this entire thing, and that's your day. It's essentially just procedure after procedure. That's really what your day looks like in interventional radiology. A lot of people will kind of liken it to different surgical subspecialties because you are just going from one patient to the next, and I don't know how many procedures an IR does on average. I would say that that probably depends on the type of procedures because there are some that are really quick, like paracentesis and thoracentesis, which can be done in just a few minutes versus really long cases like TIPS or Y90 treatments, things like that, which can take hours. So it's hard to give you an estimate on how many patients you're going to treat every day or see every day because it depends on where you are practicing and what you are doing. But in any case, your day-to-day -day work is basically like a surgical subspecialty where you are doing procedures all day, every day. So that is really IR in a nutshell. You're responsible for the notes, like I said, you're responsible for consenting patients, and I would say a lot of IR doctors also do consults. One example is at my residency, we do consults for like fibroid embolizations, for example, and so a patient will come in, we'll review the imaging with them, talk about like how we could help them with their fibroids and the symptoms that they're having, make sure that they are like understanding of what their procedure entails and things like that. And if they like, you know, the idea of it, then we will actually go ahead and schedule them for their fibroid embolization. So just like any other consult specialty, right? Like if you are doing surgery, you're going to meet the patient, see why they need surgery, talk to them about the risks and benefits, etc., and then schedule them for surgery. So in much the same way, that's what interventional radiologists do. Another thing to remember about IR is there are a lot of add-on procedures and a lot of emergent procedures that kind of IR takes. So for example, that would be like a G-tube that has fallen out that they need to replace. Or for example, a dialysis catheter that needs to be reopened. Or some sort of like a pulmonary embolism where the patient needs an, like an acute thrombectomy, they have to, the clot has to be removed. Things like that, like those are emergent cases or at least urgent cases that have to be done before the end of the day. And that's a really important part of IR that people sometimes overlook is that there is a lot of stuff that's not really already on the schedule that you end up having to make time for, whether it's during the day sometime or afterwards. Diagnostic radiology on the other hand is definitely much more like you're just really reading the cases. You're reading the cases that are on your list the list can be outpatient facilities, it's the ER, it's all the scanners that you have in your hospital, um, It's you're just reading the studies that are already on the list. So it's much more predictable, I would say, diagnostic radiology. I mean, obviously there are always those strokes that come in at the end of the day or something else that's emergent that comes in at the end of the day, but overall it's much more shift-based. So you're like, I'll start reading at 7.30 and at five o'clock someone is going to be here to take over. So if I get a urgent, like, work up at 4.45, you know, you can stay and you might end up leaving a little bit late, but most of the time there's a pretty easy handoff between shift changes. So it's much more predictable. You're not seeing patients every single day. You can, but you're not always. And it's pretty much just, you know, turning and doing the work. Um, you're just reading cases. And so that's why a lot of people like to do a mix of both like IR and DR or a mix of procedures to kind of break up the diagnostic radiology day. But overall, that's what diagnostics is like. You're really just reading the cases. So in a nutshell, IR, doing tons of procedures, DR, reading a bunch of cases. Those are the main differences between IR and DR on a day-to-day -day level. Another major difference between interventional radiology and diagnostic radiology is the call. Um, interventional radiology has a lot more call. 
and it, obviously again all this depends on how large your group is and if you have fellows and residents and whatnot taking a call for you but overall in general as like a big um, like generalization interventional radiology has a lot more call um, and the call really requires you to come in because you are going to have to embolize the bleed for example or I don't, thrombectomy like I said earlier like it really requires you to come in and do a procedure they will need you to be there physically present versus diagnostic radiology is usually um, is not quite as much of it especially if you have many group members and a lot of times that call can be done from home because you have a workstation at home and you can give them you know an urgent reading at home obviously now it seems like the culture is shifting where a lot of um, hospitals do want in-house coverage for radiology by attendings so things are sort of changing in that way but in general IR call is much more intensive you do have to come in and you have to do a procedure and you have to take a lot more call so overall IR call is worse it's much more like a surgical subspecialty and I think the worst part about IR in my opinion is that it ends up becoming sort of like a dumping zone for a lot of the things that for example other subspecialists don't want to do so just as an example um, so there are certain lines that can be done inpatient that people would prefer IR do um, and G tubes sometimes they will ask IR to come and do it G tubes GI can do those I think even surgery can insert G-tubes, but a lot of times they'll have IR do them overnight. So it sometimes just seems like a lot of the things that people don't want to do after hours end up being dumped onto the interventional radiology plate. And so you are covering all of those things for all of these other subspecialists, even though um, other people could do it, it becomes an IR call problem. So for me, that was actually something that deterred me from doing IR. I don't really like to be like a dumping ground for other subspecialties and right and I kind of feel like sometimes IR is that way and there's a lot of turf wars in that sense as well so I kind of stayed away from that specialty just personally but that is a reason why IR is so busy and why the call can get kind of busy too. Diagnostic radiology call is a lot different in the sense that you're just continuing to read studies in the evening and overnight and Depending on what your call structure looks like and if you have residents and stuff, that can either be like non-stop work or it can just be a phone call in the middle of the night if someone has a question for you. So it just depends. But overall, the amount of call is definitely higher on the interventional radiology side. That brings me to my next point, which is salary. Um, in general, interventional radiologists make more because they are doing procedures all day every day and that usually is a higher like revenue generating act and so that will actually contribute to their salary and on top of that there's usually a lot more call involved and usually call pays a little bit better than regular hour work so for all those reasons um, interventional radiology salary is in general higher than a diagnostic radiologist Another major difference, which kind of goes back to the first point of the day-to-day -day work, but just patient interaction is going to be much higher in interventional radiology because you are seeing patients like back-to-back -back all day every day versus in diagnostics, you may do a couple of procedures if you're on that rotation, but otherwise you're really not seeing um, patients. You're obviously still talking to people, you're talking to your colleagues, you're talking to your consultants, you're talking to clinicians who have questions for you, but you may not actually get that direct patient interaction unless you go into something more patient directed, such as breast imaging. But otherwise, it's a lot less patient interaction than interventional radiology. The last thing I'll talk about is just overall quality of life and work-life balance. If that's something that you're interested in, I would say that diagnostic radiology does have better work-life balance than interventional radiology because you're on call a lot less often, it's much more predictable, you're not expected to go in for like something emergent that comes in because usually you have someone already there, that's kind of the nature of shift work in diagnostic radiology. So I would say for those reasons, the quality of life is better in diagnostic radiology. and. Um, yeah, I think that there are yeah major differences between IR and DR and hopefully this helped shed some light on those things. It's overall the same radiology like umbrella, but they are very different in terms of what you're doing. So if you are a medical student or someone who's looking into these fields, I would say definitely do a rotation in both interventional radiology and then also in diagnostics. And remember that there are diagnostic radiology subspecialties that kind of mix the two like breast imaging or even MSK, musculoskeletal imaging, where you are doing some procedures, but it's not quite as heavy as interventional radiology. 
Well, anyways, I hope this was overall helpful to you to kind of figure out the differences between IR and DR. My main piece of advice is to make sure you do a rotation, both interventional radiology and diagnostic radiology. See if you can get through multiple diagnostic radiology subspecialties, like even breast imaging or musculoskeletal imaging to see what it could be like to have a diagnostic job or diagnostic subspecialty where you are doing some procedures because you'll definitely get more of a mix versus just doing diagnostic radiology without any procedures at all. Especially if you are someone who likes procedures but maybe doesn't want to do like four hour long cases, which is very much kind of where I was. Um, and the other thing I would tell you is that a lot of jobs are actually a mixture of interventional and diagnostic radiology, where you are doing IR on some days and then doing diagnostics on other days. So it's not always like you're doing 100% IR or 100% DR, even if you are an interventional radiologist by training. So just certain things to consider if you are sort of looking at this pathway for a job. And yeah, I hope this was helpful and I will see you all in my next video. Bye.